Welcome back. Um, my name is Imogen and this is the second part of a three part tutorial about weeding a small straw rug. Um, let's move this one. So we're going to be um, looking at how to build a frame loom today. So the previous um, tutorial was about how to make yarn and different kinds of yarn. Um, this tutorial is about how to build this frame loom, okay? This exact one here cost around £80 to build in raw materials and it took a couple of hours to build. Um, the one thing you will need is a power drill um, just to secure each corner with a screw and to pilot drill the holes for the pegs. Um, that might be something you need to ask for help with. So I've also put um, a list of materials and where to get them from on my blog, which is www.brightmoon.co, just .co. So if you miss anything, the resource list will be on my website. Um, okay, so <laughs> a frame loom. This is the simplest kind of loom. To, to make and work on. Um, it involves a set of pegs at the top and the bottom and they hold the warp which goes up and down like that and then it means you can weave on it very simply. Um, it's a nice project to, to make one and it's also a nice object to have and keep. Um, I chose to invest in shaker pegs so I'll show you what they are first. So shaker pegs are these beautiful hand-turned little pegs and um, shakers um, are a Christian group and they um, used to keep everything off the floor so they used to hang up their chairs so they could clean so they used to have lots and lots of these pegs just on the wall um, and they're quite historic. These are some lovely shaker pegs hand-turned normally they come with a little turning of wood here that you glue in but I don't trust the glue over time not to move. So there's a maker in England on eBay who makes them pre-fitted like this. Um, you need for this size about 62 pegs and they work out about a pound each. So that's 62 pounds, that's a lot of money, but they do look nice, they are really practical and as an object that's gonna last, I think that's a really nice way to actually finish it. The other way you can do it, and I've seen a lot of handmade rug looms like this, is to use um, panel pins. So these are quite big. These are 50 mil or five centimeter um, brass panel pin. They're pretty chunky, and um, I think you would you would hammer these in rather than drill them in. Whereas these, you need to pre-drill the hole with a power drill, and then turn it by hand, which you might need to put a glove on because it's actually quite hard work on your skin. Um, I did all of them and it was a bit uncomfortable, but just in terms of that. So you can use panel pins or you can use shaker pegs. These, a bag of these, a bag of, I don't know, 100 of these probably cost less than £10. Whereas these cost a pound each. So either is fine. I wanted to try these, but this would also be fine. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Again, I'm going to put them on the resource list so you can make a decision. But the frame itself is actually very um, economical to make. So it's made with um, actual picture frames. So they're called stretchers or, or stretcher frames. You can buy them from um, arts and crafts supply stores online. Um, these ones are really nice quality. They are, they're a bit heavier than a standard one. So these are called archival ones and they've got a bit of a beveled edge. So I put all my um, shaker pegs on that flat section there because the shaker pegs are about a centimeter wide so you can pop them in there like that. So you've got this really nice, actually really nicely made frame and the mitre corners are already cut so it's a really nice archival frame. It's nice and heavy. It's not like cheap. It's not so it's pine, but it's nice. And it's got pre-cut corners. So what that means is, and, they, and I should just say as well, they come in pairs. So you can choose the length and you can choose the width and they come in pairs. Um, and they're already pre-done like this. So look, 
me see if I can do this with the camera. You slot them together. And then we'll just work them in like that. And you might need um, a soft, like a mallet or a hammer that you've got a tea towel around just to knock it in. So I'm just doing this to show you by hand. But what happens is you get a lovely finish like this. And then, there you go, you need to get them flush. Pop a, um, a small screw in there so that you know that it's... Um, it's caught and it's screwed together and you do one screw on every corner um, it holds it perfectly um, so you need to decide are you going to put the shaker pegs or the panel pins in before you put it together or after so this is a, literally a picture frame loom so the size that I've gone for for this project and you know the beauty of this is you can make it as big as you want you can make a huge one um, I've made it this size because it's the size that I like to make a rug. You don't want the rug to be too small because it kind of doesn't have so much impact. A very big one, you're getting more into sort of blanket area. But a nice small one, so about a metre long by about 70, 75 centimetres wide, is a really nice finished size with a bit of tassel fringe on the end. This frame, I got a pair of... 127 centimetres and a pair of 86 centimetres. So another thing that's really good about this frame loom is that if you want to weave with it on the wall, it's really lovely, it can just stay on the wall. If you need to take it down or store it away, it's flat, you can just slide it down the back of a sofa, you can put it under the bed, you can put it behind the table, or if you really wanted to and needed to, you could just unscrew each of the four screws and flat pack it, obviously with the work finished, but if you want to keep the work on, it actually travels quite well. <laughs> I've had, I've moved this around quite a lot, I've done, um, it's gone from my house to the studio, and then it's gone from the studio to my new home. So it's been, it's moved around quite a lot and it's actually held up quite well because it's it's something that I'm doing a bit slower, um, this particular piece. How I've got it spaced is I've got it spaced. Um, so every peg holds two strands because you go up in a loop. And I've spaced one, one peg every two centimetres. I'll make a rug that's around 70, around 75, but when it's finished and, and washed, because we have to cold soak it afterwards, it'll probably come down to 70 centimetres. And then by the time we've got um, knotted off the ends and, and finished it, although it's a one metre 27 length, um, it's, it's more going to be more like a metre finished. So probably a metre by, by 70 which is roughly what this is. So, you know, that's actually, it doesn't sound big, but it's actually quite a nice size. Like, you know, it's it's a nice little size. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, there are lots of different looms. And, and I think the more you go on, like with the spinning wheel that I showed you in the previous tutorial, um, you can invest in more machinery orientated items but when you do that there's a bit more getting to know the machine or getting to know the equipment with this it's it's so simple that's what it is there's no moving parts there's, there's none of that it's just very simple very beautiful um, so like I said I'm going to put the full instructions of how to make it um, with a list of, of items that you would need to buy on my website and um, as a worksheet and I'll try and include them in the video as well so you can uh, have a think about if that's something you might like to try and build yourself um, and we can go from there okay well um, the next stage is going to be actually weaving um, 
I mentioned in the previous tutorial that I did um, earlier um, in the project, um, earlier last, actually was last end of last year, for Romany Arts, um, a small weaving example of a wall hanging. Now, that shows you the basics of weaving on a small scale and how to make a small cardboard loom. And I think if you were interested in practicing, that might be a good place to just start to kind of introduce yourself. And then once you've built your loom, I can show you how to weave on it. Um, and I'll give you a quick talk through now about warping. Even though there's a warp on this, I can show you how I do it. So you're going to need some warp yarn. Now warp yarn comes on a cone. It's important to choose the warp yarn that's nice and right for you because it's the foundation of your whole project. So warp yarns can be linen, they can be thinner, they can be, this is Berber wool, um, Berber rug yarn made out of wool. So this is quite thick. See the difference? So that's linen, that's wool. This is actually a rug yarn. This is about £10 off eBay. Again, I'll put a link to it. Um, this is, again, about £10. Um, you can get a couple of projects, maybe two or three projects just off one of these. I've used this a couple of times, so that's still got quite a lot on. Um, this, again, it goes quite a long way. So if you want to invest in one kind of yarn, um, it's um, very simple. What you search for is yarn on a cone. So this is a cone. And it means that it's, it's, it's spun in a way that it's not necessarily... Um, for knitting, it's more for weaving and it's, it's stronger, it's not going to stretch because that's kind of important that once it's on here it's nice, like it moves a little bit but it's under tension, it's a bit like a guitar string um, and that's how we need it to be. So this one used um, linen flax um, which is nice and thick and it gives it structure and um, it's quite hard wearing as well. So, um, how we warp it on is we put the, imagine this is empty, <laughs> I'm working backwards a little bit just because I already began the sampling process and I, I don't really want to um, take it off or build another loom, but I know you can use your imagination. So you get your yarn and you put your cone on the floor. So how I started, I just made a knot, a loop knot. Yeah, I don't know if that's the technical name, it is. And I popped it around one of my pegs. Now. What we want to make sure is that the whole thing is under tension. We don't want it loose and floppy like this. We want it nice and tense. So you can pull down. This is why it's good to have a strong frame because you're going to be putting a bit of tension on it. Pull it down and just hook it underneath. You can just do that. Can do that again. Pull it down and hook it underneath. Make sure it's nice and tight at that point. You can feel it in your hand and then over the next peg nice and tight when you touch it you want to feel it bounce like that. down to the next one up to the next one nice and tight in your hand down to the next one and it's literally that's it there's no mystery to it it's just up and down but the most important thing is that you've got a bit of tension on it a bit of pull so that when you touch it you can see it's nice it vibrates and it's going to be a nice, firm structure for your, for your weaving. And just do that all the way across in one go. If you need to join a piece, if your yarn snaps or something, just make a knot at the top um, to the end that you finished, because you want the whole thing to be under one piece of tension, and then carry on. Um, and then when you get to the other end, again, do a loop knot. Keep it nice and tight, and that's it. Once you've got your warp on, you're ready to weave. It's really simple. I'll take that off so I use that again. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can contact me through Isaac at the Romani Cultural and Arts Company, um, and I'm very happy to answer any technical questions. Um, 
yeah, more than happy to answer any questions. Okay, so now <laughs> we're going to get on to weaving. Okay, so to get into the weaving itself, as you can see, I actually started in the middle. That's because I hadn't woven on this kind of loom before. And I just wanted to get to grips with it. I also wanted to get my tensioning kind of right. It would make more sense to start from the bottom up. But I started in the middle. I just, you know, that's just something I decided to do. What I did do was put in some linen ties as I went, which is literally piece, just pieces of linen, any string would do, and just threaded it through the last two edge warp threads and tied it in a bow, <coughs> with a bow around the frame to make sure that I wasn't going too tight and pulling it, pulling it in because that can happen, you can get really tight. So I'm gonna teach you how to keep it nice. You want it nice and straight along the edge. You want an equal distance all the way along between the frame and the last thread, and that kind of helps with that. But I would recommend starting from the bottom. So I, I made that <laughs> a discovery so you don't have to. So this is my yarn that I spun, and I triple plied it, and I put it on a ball, and then I put it on these little shuttles. I'm going to take it off so you can show. I can show you how I how I do that. So this is a small shuttle, just made of wood. I have another one here. This is a handmade one made out of hazel, hazel wood. Very sweet. You just pop it over the edge like that, and then you you don't go round and around the middle like this, like. In my place. You don't go round and around the, the middle, you go around the edge in a zigzag. So you go around, 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 around. Then you swap sides and you go around, around. See that crisscross happening? Around, around, oh, around and around. And what that does you get lots of yarn on it but it's on the side so it's flat it's not all around the middle because you don't want to disturb the threads too much so let me just go back this way so this is the end of a row and what you want to do is want to get a stick or a, or a fork from the kitchen anything that's just got a little point on it and just press it down slowly because you get all the everything lining up then. And then the principle with weaving is over under. So the last one was over. So I'm gonna go under. Over, under, and really you're just picking up every other one. This is the salvage, you want it to touch. But you also want movement in it because you don't want it to be like that. You want it to be like that, nice and straight. Under. So I want to go under, over, so I don't touch it. Under, I just pick it forward slightly. Over, don't touch it. Under, over. Very much like building a wall. You know, you're alternating nice and loose, not too tight, and then tap it in. Doesn't have to be really super tight. And then the thing with hand spun yarn is, um, so I can just concentrate on that one this time. The thing with hand spun yarn is it's, it differentiates in texture, so it's not even, which is actually really nice. It means you get like, just a nice texture. So you do a few. If you want to put more ease in, if it's getting tight, you kind of go up at an angle like this. And then you beat it down like this from that angle. And what that does is it makes sure that it's nice and soft and it surrounds the thread. It doesn't, it's not tight through the thread and it shouldn't affect this end. It should be nice and loose. Loose in tension, like neat in stitch or pick, but loose intention. 
so we'll do that again. I want you to be able to see. And if you make a mistake, you just go back. It's really, really forgiving. It's really simple. Okay. I'm not hammering it down so I'm like crushing it. I'm just tapping it into place quite gently. Just a little piece of wood. So I'll finish this one and then I'll show you how you would join the cork. It's not so much a join, like you're not knotting anything together, you're just overlaying the end of one and the start of another. And um, There's lots of different ways that weavers do this but I have a technique that I use that um, really suits my kind of yarn. Um, So this could be any yarn, I just want to make that clear. This is hand spun yarn that I made because that's what I wanted to sample and when Isaac asked me to do this project this is what I was working on so I'm going to just honour that I'm working on that this particular yarn but we made yarn in the first tutorial made out of ribbon and, and fabric so I'm going to actually put a piece of that in so you can see it as a sample but I could equally use the yarn that I showed you that was knitting yarn or chunky yarn, you know, um, any colour, any texture, you know, it could be rainbow, <laughs> it could be rainbow yarn, it could be anything. So this is the point at which you can literally do anything you want and there's no limit, you can, you can change the row, you can change the colour that you use. So I've just got to the end of this row. Really happy with that row, it looks nice. So I went under the last one, so I'm going to go over it and under the next one. And then again, I'm just going to, the most important thing to do is when you start a new row, you just make sure that first one isn't tight, it's not pulling in, and it's nice and level. You can stretch it a little bit. This is something like any skill that the more you do it, the um, better you get at it, and the, the more. Um, the more confident you get in that you're not thinking about it. So you can just you can just let your hands guide you. So look, you can see that I'm nearly at the end of my um, my yarn on my shuttle. So I'm just gonna finish this shuttle. I'm gonna show you how I change over. Now, um, I try and be as conscious of the yarn as possible. So I try not to cut it up too much. If it's handmade yarn, I try and blend the edges in so it's not too blunt. Um, I'm just going to take the shuttle off now and just do this by hand. Again, you could do it by hand. It's just you want the a little bit of yarn on your shuttle just to get you going and finish it off by hand. So I'm just going to show you how I finish that edge when I've put this into place. So this end I did cut with scissors but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently tease it open, make it a bit fluffy because that helps um, with the join. So I'm just going to open it up and fluff it out a little bit. It's like that. A bit more like that. So I'm going to keep going until I finish it just behind that, it's going to poke behind. And don't worry about it not being tied to anything or um, you know, not secure because a wool has this lovely quality of felting itself together. It's going to be woven and then it's going to be soaked in warm, like hand warm water, like not hot but warm water. And then it's going to be finished and that's going to be the back anyway. So then I have another shuttle ready and loaded. Again, I'm just going to fluff those edges. So I'm going to finish there. You can see my fluffy thread there. And it's to the back. I'm going to come back 
one, two, three. And I'm just going to repeat those three. So this fluffy end is going to go behind there, over there, under there, over there, under there. So all I've done is I've, there we go. I've got two on top of each other the same for about one, two, three, four, I'm going to push that down just a little bit extra tight and what that's going to do that's just going to disappear into the weaving so you've got an overlap of this much when that's washed and finished those pieces won't move they won't come out you don't need to tie a knot you don't need to stitch anything in it's just one way of joining and I always do it in the middle section a lot of people think oh you should join at an end or you should you should put the tail out and finish deal with it later that's one way to do it I've done it like that in the past but actually, if you finish a tail somewhere in this middle section and keep the ends clear, it all just blends in. And if it's near the edge, it's more likely to want to stick out. Something amazing, when it's in the middle, it just kind of does its thing and you never see it, you never have to think about it again. So that is how I join. I just do an overlap of about four, of about four um, stitches and that's it. Okay, I'm just going to carry on. Now, as you can see, this is quite slow in terms of weaving, but it's actually very relaxing and it's nice to actually do something calm and slow for a, a little bit. You know, you might want to do a row and then go and carry on doing whatever you're doing. You know, if you've got children to homeschool or housework to do or anything, you know, just you know do a little bit leave it it's very forgiving and um, you can pick it up come back to it um, I've been working on this for a little while now and it, like I said it's moved it's moved um, <laughs> home it's moved studio all in the last few months and it's fine I just pick it up and I do an, another little row few rows and then I leave it I'm going to hopefully finish it for this project because I'd like to finish it because I like, I like to finish things quite quickly, um, so this is like an interesting one, so again I'm just going to make sure that's not pulling in too tight, I might actually put a, um, use a bit of a string here, I can actually put a, um, you always go two, two threads in, like you can see here that I'm actually separating the wool with my fingers, and it goes back again, it's really really forgiving, like there are no mistakes. Yeah. Um, is it long enough? Yeah, because I don't want my knot to be too. This is these are going to be cut off at the end, so it's, they they just um, that just helps me to keep it level. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm just going to turn my chair a little bit because I'm sitting to the side, and it's actually really good if you can sit facing your work properly, so you don't stretch your back. Um, Also the beauty of having it on the wall, I've got it on some linen strings with knots in, like loops, so I can move it up and down if I need it to be higher or lower. And if you do need to do that, you can just literally tie a piece of linen around the bar, the, the frame, um, and it's absolutely fine. I'll just do another row of this just to give you the technique and then I'll show you how to do the, um, the fabric yarn that we made last week. Again, if you went for um, regular knitting yarn, same thing, just put it on your shuttle. You can make these out of cardboard as well. These are wooden, um, but you can make them out of cardboard. They're really just chunky, chunky cardboard. 
and cut a notch in either end. It doesn't even have to be a circle, it could just be a slash or a, or a V. Um, and then that's great, you've got a tool there. <laughs> like with all these things, you can invest in the equipment if you feel like you're gonna use it. But if it's just something you wanna do as a practice um, and see how you go, then you don't need to spend lots of money. Um, you know, you can, this is the bit where the join is underneath, just to say, so I'm just gonna make sure that that is nice and solid. And I think you'll notice that you don't even see the join. So again, I'll pop all the links to materials and resources so you can have a little look at if you want to buy anything or um, find out where I get my equipment from. No, this one. Oh, <laughs> I've caught two and two, and I meant to only catch one and one. So let's just take that out. There we go. It's very forgiving, you know. If you make a mistake, you just take it out. Go back a step. It's much easier than them um, correcting a mistake, say in knitting or sewing, where you have to unpick. This is so easy. Um, I really hope that you're enjoying the practice. And like with the yarn making and the spinning, you know, you can, as your body knows and your hands know the technique, make sure it's um, secure. Um, once you know the technique, um, it's actually really easy to concentrate on other things if you want to just like have a chat or you know, it's crafts interesting, especially domestic craft. Um, you know, when it's in the home, You know, you might have other things, you might have to do some home homeschooling with your kids or anything like that, or you might have someone in for a chat and you can just keep working and chatting. It's very sociable. <laughs> By the same token, you can just have it as your quiet time. Have a cup of tea. It's lovely to decompress. So I keep going, but I think that's kind of self-explanatory. It's very simple. There's no patterning in this, this very basic weaving. So I'm just going to pop that to one side underneath there. Now, let's have a little look at our... So this is our, um, our cut fabric yarn that we made earlier. Now, we might put some of this on a shuttle just so it's easier to handle. Um, I think that might actually be good. And remember... You go along the, the outside edge. There's any threads off the edge. Remember we did this um, the ripping technique. You sometimes get a few um, threads that you can just pull off and put them out for the birds for their nest building. sure how much of this I can actually fit on a shuttle. There's a knot join so I'm going to try and fit a little bit more on. 
because I want to keep that nice join in there. We're going to maybe cut it about here. Okay, so there you go. I think I'm going to um, do a section here that has got this in, just so you can see. So I'm going to do the same kind of join. So just going to go to the back. And I'm going to take that through there. There we go, because it's sticking out a little bit. So if I start about here and go now this can go in flat or it can go in twisted. That's up to you. Hang on a second, did I do that right? No, I didn't because I want to actually mirror what happened. So over under. Sometimes you have to think about it. <laughs> Over under. Okay, and that's where the end of that row finished. So now it's a new row. So I'm going to carry on how I normally would. So with this yarn, I'm going to put one on there. The knots are actually a feature in the join, and you'll get little tufts all over. Now, if that's something you don't enjoy, um, then you can always cut the knot and do the join like I showed you and, and overlap. Um, the difference with this being um, made out of fabric is that it might move differently. Um, so the wool felts to itself, the fabric isn't gonna do that. So think about if you mind those little tufty knots, I don't mind them, I think they're quite sweet. Or if you, if you really hate them um, and you might wanna hide them, then you might wanna cut your yarn or not, not join it in the first place. So look, The end of this is a bit easier to handle because it's the fabric is kind of naturally going to just fold itself around. And I haven't done anything especially to this fabric. Um, I haven't spun it. I've literally popped it on the shuttle and by handling it, you can see it sort of naturally wants to fold and roll itself. That's really just a nice part of the technique. Pop it together. What you do get is a bigger and exposure of warp thread, which is part of the detail. And because we ripped the strips, we've got these lovely fluffy edges, um, sometimes called eyelash, because it's like fluttery eyelash, um, which I think is really lovely. Um, it just adds to the, the softness. And actually, it's working really nicely with my wool. Um, if you think about textures and colours, the, um, the cream wool is undyed and the calico cotton is undyed and they're pretty much the same colour. And then the linen um, cotton, kind of grey grey oatmeal colour is kind of similar texture to the um, calico and so you have this sort of lovely kind of conversation between the two. So 
so yeah, any craft that you practice, you're holding that history and you're representing everyone that's gone before you. You're part of that lineage and I think it's really important to think about that, to think about honouring the techniques, the craft, um, why, you know, the history of it and think about the lineage of that and that when you start to weave and spin and do any craft, you become part of that lineage. And I think that's a responsibility involved in that to really honour it and, um, you know, honour yourself in it. Um, those people that went before you and yeah it's just it's a lot to think about um, when you're making you know is it is it something that um, touches your heart is it something that inspires you or is it something that kind of isn't so important but it's good to know that thousands and millions of people and women especially have been doing this you know in various ways not maybe exactly the same but in various ways before you now no we haven't put any spin in this but look look what it's doing naturally that's really to me that's really interesting so the kind of fabric tells you what it wants to do and you get sort of areas of detail and movement um so yeah, I think I'm going to carry on and fill this section in with the, um, the yarn, the fabric yarn, and then give you a little bit of an update. So because I won't get to finish this, um, I don't think, um, before the the tutorial goes out, it's something that we can maybe weave along together. Um, if you want to make a start, because it could take you weeks to actually finish it, or if you really want to, you know, dedicate some quality time to to weaving. I mean, I don't know how quickly you could make a rug like this, but um, you could probably do it in a few days if you really like dedicated yourself to it. Um, I think that's quite a nice thing to do as well. It just depends what your days look like. And, I think that's the good thing about, like I said, weaving, you can pick it up and put it down. So look, you can see that came in quite flat. That came in very flat. And this has come in lovely and twisted. So I think I got a sense already that this is actually going to be really lovely building it up. And I'm kind of happy that it's tonally mixed in. So if you're going to do a lot of mixing of different yarns, like this, of colours are the same but the texture's different or maybe I wanted to, to do um, like completely um, like the same texture but lots of different colours that would look very different that would look more flat or more about the colour striping whereas this for me is about the texture striping because it's you know I have a different way of thinking about it but it's equally valid like so there's no there's no wrong and right i'll just look at you for a second there's no wrong and right with any artwork or craft work or design it's if you're the maker then it's your decision it's what you like and i think that's so important to honor that so this is this is working for me i really like it if you don't like it that's fine <laughs> and i mean that it's not it doesn't you don't have to like it but what i would really encourage you to do is find the colours and the textures that you like because if this is going to go in your home you've got to really like it so there's no right or wrong if you want really bright colours or really different textures um you know there's even some yarn out there that's like unicorn yarn you know with like glitter in it rainbows you know this whole thing could be a rainbow like you could start off with with red and work all the way through the spectrum whatever you feel 
is what you should do and I really believe that and I mean that I think you should spend some time on a craft that really makes you happy and feeds your soul and makes you feel proud of yourself um that's why why else would you make you know if it wasn't pleasing you I don't know life's too short for um things to, to spend time on things you're not happy with so yeah I'm really pleased with how this is looking um I will take some pictures and I will put my resource list up on my website and link to that um and then we can see how you want to go with it like if you want it if you want more detail if you want to see me weaving on my other looms um I'm really open to whatever people you know want and need and and feel let's just give that a bit of yeah that's great see that is good if it was super tight and like that would be bad so that is great I'm really happy with that um yeah if if any questions um any feedback any requests um any you know anything really I'm, I'm if I don't know I will find out and if it's something I can show you I will um, and yeah I love the idea of a weave along you know if we if we could all get our looms made and and just start weaving um, I think it would be a really lovely um, community project um, and then yeah <laughs> just another way to communicate with each other especially because of covid and not being able to meet up and travel and see people it's difficult so for me this is also a really important mental health practice you know it keeps me happy it makes me feel better if i'm not feeling happy or if i'm feeling a bit stressed um you know we all have physical health and we all have mental health and I think doing a nice creative project is really good for your mental health so I'll always advocate um, artwork um, of any kind to support your mental health especially during this time so I'm just going to finish this row and see what we've got and take some pictures for you and then I think that's going to be the end of this sort of third aspect of the tutorial. So we started off with yarn, especially how to make this um, fabric yarn, um, how to do a bit of spinning, um, how to build your loom was the second part. And then how to weave is the third part of this tutorial that I'm doing for you. And I really hope that you've enjoyed it. And that it's given you something to think about. And that you feel inspired. <laughs> um, because that's the most important thing is that you feel like you might want to give it a go. And, uh, that it might be something that you want to spend some time some of your time on um, creating something for your home there we go so I'm just gonna put that shuttle down there so what do you think? Let's I'm just gonna bring this over here. Hmm, something interesting happening there. So you can see it's not perfectly straight. That's fine because as we weave, it will kind of fill in, and it's a nice way of working because um, it almost looks like a landscape. It will start to look like hills or the sea or you know. So. There's another little tuft there, one of the knots we made earlier. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So I want to sign off for now and say thank you for doing um, this tutorial with me. And I might make another short film about how to finish the piece when it's actually full and we need to take it off the loom because we need to do some knots. 
point it's quite simple and then we need to soak it in in cool water not hot but hand warm water so try and keep it um because when we do that it kind of blends it all together and it looks incredible so um Thank you everyone um, for your participation and I really look forward to delivering more tutorials and um, getting any feedback or any questions. Look after yourselves. Take care. Bye.